So I made a bunch of these coils already. Um, you know, here was the smallest one I've done so far. This was the most successful one because the biggest arcs runs the nicest. Uh, this one's the battery powered one. an impressive little circuit uh, but you know like in this case I can't really run can't really run continuous wave with uh, any of these for very long this guy's pretty much a champ um, and I can do pretty much anything with it and I've fit it up to uh, 40 volts so far it works pretty good you know play music interrupted continuous wave whatever but you know to do that I had a gigantic heat sink in there so here's another one you know and they're all based off uh, this Tifatronics driver right here. It just ends up looking like this. Uh, you know, it's like the same circuit except a couple chokes coming down. So you treat it like a sort of like a Mazzilli driver and where you, instead of you have a center tab primary, you've got the dual chokes and just a single primary. 12 volt regulator voltage divider here that's on the gates reference to that 12 volt output. You know, I turn it up till it puts about four volts on the gates. I'd say it's about four volts or so. Because this interrupter is pulling the gates low, then a 90% duty cycle is gonna equal a 10% on time on your output. In my case, you know, with my interrupter, I'll just use it like I normally would with a Tesla coil, except I'll just, you know, reverse my duty cycle knob. And then now you just throw a little transistor on the input there with an LED indicator that'll show you a blink that represents what your output is supposed to look like. Alright so I got this going at uh, about 13 volts. That's about as low as I can go with the way the uh, voltage divider is set to get it oscillating but I've got it all the way down so I'm just gonna put it continuous all the way up and you can see it pulls a couple amps so the way this is set with that primary sitting where it's at, not all the way at the bottom, I don't really get any plasma output at that voltage, where if I was to drop it down, it'll give out a nice little bush. Of course, I can get the plasma, like as you see, by burning myself like that, but I can, you, you basically draw it out by loading it. So, pulling this, you know, hot arc, And it, uh, see if I can, it pulls that couple amps up, you know, all the way up to about six at times. Let's put it at like 17. Starts pulling even more significant arcs. That'll burn the crap out of you. You know, the way that set at that voltage interrupted, the uh, arcs are not too impressive although at that voltage you can really draw those arcs out higher by moving the primary around however at about 30 volts does all right And I can try to run this at much higher frequency interruption by popping that switch there.
you know so if I run this at like 24 volts let's say there is a tuning on the primary where it, the arcs are pretty decent they're nothing insane but at this setting I kind of have to draw them out a little bit you know they're not they're not really insane arcs they're all right I've got it at 30 volts and I'll raise the primary up a little bit. There's a point where the output looks more like sword sparks. The thing is, while you can take this type of driver, more particularly like the uh, Scori style drivers, which use some pretty genius ways to, um, re I guess, recover flyback and whatnot. The output is really good at the low voltage, but as far as I can tell, it's not, I don't think you can run those continuous wave, um, maybe without really changing a whole lot of stuff around. So that was sort of the point trying to find something that still gives pretty impressive arcs for lower voltage but I can also easily just crank the voltages around run continuous wave and something that if I wanted to with a supply that maybe would do like 10 amps or so 30 volts then I could run this continuous wave at that voltage maybe slightly bigger heat sink throw a fan on or something um, and those arcs are really impressive so you get you get real beefy arcs at the low voltage and you still get pretty decent interrupted output you know just just depending on the tuning so this again is always a random guinea pig coil I've got but probably work better off with uh, maybe like a coil of this size but using much smaller gauge wire because this has only got about 400 turns on it something like that this is about a little over a megahertz and while this is with that top load it's probably about 700 kilohertz if i run it continuous wave at about you know 13 volts or so and um, basically kick start it in cw at that voltage then i can crank the voltage down and um, so it's running and um, I can actually bring it all the way down. Let's bring it to like uh, be like three volts. I think it kicked back out. Now you get too low, and the voltage regulator just won't do anything. So I mean, seven volts still runs. Bring it down. So four point eight. It's still going. Still got, still got the decent field, and let's see what voltage will it go out. I'm just gonna lean it on there, bring it down. So I'm at two and a half volts. So I don't even have enough after my input diode over here to light these LEDs, and. Um, you know, so obviously the the 12 volt regulators underpowered. The MOSFETs are absolutely being underdriven, uh, just barely being turned on by the you know resonant feedback. But still, <laughs> still going. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, in that case, I was sitting here thinking, like, well, dang, you know, I need to add my own separate logic supply here to be able to run it down to like a volt because I know it will run down to a volt and I can get really good output like this uh, but I might not even need to because apparently you can just run this whole thing off the single rail and bring it all the way down to under three volts uh, so long as you kickstart it <laughs> first